Hey guys, it's White Monkey here with a new video teaching you guys how to draw hair, any hairstyles, 10 little nice tips, ultimate guide, you're probably not going to need anything else, especially coming from the perspective of someone who makes comics in myself. I'm guessing you're going to enjoy this. I hope. This drawing tutorial should be good whether you're a beginner or a vet, especially if you really want to dive into the anime manga style of doing things. Even if you want to go more of a realistic route or maybe a western comic route, this drawing tutorial should still help you a lot. For this hair and hairstyle tutorial, we're going to be using models that are actually characters from the popular series My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia. You guys should be able to recognize some of the characters we'll be using as models and we'll just have fun with them. Keeping things simple in the creator style, Horikoshi Kohei. I did something like this before with my how to draw clothes video, so you guys go check that out as well after this. So let's get down to it. 10 tips, let's go. One, first things first, you wanna figure out the area. So that's the area where the hair is actually gonna be growing from. This applies to, you know, top of the head, but even if you were drawing a goatee or a mustache, whatever, you still wanna know where the hair actually begins. Then you can figure everything else out as you move forward. And here I'm just showing you other ways to draw the hairlines and different types of hairlines. There's some where the hairline's really going back, which is weird for a character this age, but you know, it happens. I've seen it. You've seen it, I'm sure. Sometimes the character is completely bald or bald with little patches of hair on the side, or the hairline's kind of weird doing this M shape. And uh, we have what we see over here. Almost like you got waves like Harry Osborn, old Spider-Man cartoon. A little thing to keep in mind is there's this little dot at the top of your scalp, like in your head area, where all the hair kind of grows away from. Like they're growing in the opposite direction from that little spot at the top of your head. Some people have it more towards the right, some people have it more towards the left. It depends on your character, it depends on your style, depends on what you want to do. Obviously they become more difficult to see the more hair the character has, but it's just good to know it kind of helps direct you when you're putting together your characters with spiky hair or just regular hair or hair that's maybe a little shorter. It's just good to know and keep keep in mind. And you can see those lines. It's almost like doing the perspective to like that point in your head. And then you can see it over here. And then, you know, it's just, like I said, good to keep in mind. And then we see drawing the lines again. You can kind of do waves here. Doing waves is almost like having little dashes of lines like right next to the initial line and uh, it's almost like highlights in the hair it's very subtle highlights in the hair and then you just do it with each line and then if you take a step back it kind of looks like you know waves tip two would be to use simple light shapes to form the shape of the hair kind of organic kind of not organic but just somewhere in between so you just get the overall shape and then you can go in with detail after you want to kind of be thinking in layers and you just want to figure out all of this parts as easy as possible make it simple for yourself but simple shapes and then you go in with detail later part of this kind of comes into play with your art style and the way you do things so if it was like a character with spiky hair you know maybe the edges will have more than one point but in the beginning i'll just go one point be very loose and then decide to go in with details after and those details would be you know making the edges have a little more spikes making hair strands and so on so you can see i'll be adding in more shapes and i'll be adding in more lines so you can see here are the edges i'm putting more lines having it pop out a little more giving it more edges like pointy spiky edges at those points to make it feel more like hair, make it feel more natural and organic to mimic, you know, hair strands that have kind of come together to give us that fine point. Tip three would be shading in and putting in the little lines to mimic the hair strands. And those lines can kind of be used to show the direction of the hair and where it's going, where it's coming from, and just using lines to show the flow of the hair. You'll see more lines the darker the area is. So if you were to shade the hair, you would actually draw more lines in the places that are supposed to be shaded in, right? But again, you can be stylistic with it, wanna be loose and it's just a sketch. You don't really want to shade in the direction of the hair flow or anything like that and the hair strands and you know the direction you're going in. You're just going with like a quick, a quick hatching to just cover up the spots. Uh, you can do that as well if it's just a simple sketch. But generally, if it was like a drawing you wanted to give a little more detail, the lines that you put into the hair are in the flow of the hair and the, in, in going in a certain direction of the hair. That's the way you're drawing the lines. And you put in more lines 
to show shading versus actual hatching or cross hatching. It just depends on how loose you want to be, your style, how sketchy you want to be. There are a lot of factors to keep in mind. And so we're just drawing those lines in the direction that we think the hair is going to be falling and leaving some spots to replicate or mimic like highlight hitting the hair and we'll see it more so in the darker parts of the hair versus the lighter parts of the hair because well they are the lighter parts of the hair Duh. continue being consistent and fill out the planks which kind of segues into tip four is you kind of want to have a decent idea of what style you're going for you want to be really realistic or cartoony anime whatever whatever you pick you want to be consistent and so here we're continuing that consistency with this redoing going through all the tips we just went over just now and we have that basic weird shape getting that very rough fluffy spiky happy-go-lucky hair that we have here on Deku and now I'm kind of putting extra lines to make it feel a little more organic having the edges giving it more edges I guess giving just a little bit more edges and having the hair fall to cover the forehead so again when you're doing that hairline we see a lot of the forehead but in these cases we don't see the forehead because the hair is just falling down and the shading here is different from what we did with uh, Todoroki here I'm just kind of shading because this is like a quick sketch and I'm just showing you a different way to kind of put that shading in and if you wanted to have extra shading then you just go in further with more lines to show shade simple thing you got the hairline we know where the hair is coming from we did the overall loose shape then we went a little further with it darker and then we are shading in a different technique if need be we go to those edges a little bit and add more kind of spikes where the hair strands kind of come together to form a sharp pointy end but uh, speaking of pointy ends we see more of that with uh, Bakugo where his hair is like really really spiky and in some cases you know some styles the hair you don't need to put those hair strand lines because it might be finished I, I believe like Naruto doesn't really have that many hair strand lines so it depends on your style like I said but here you see with Bakugo it's extra extra spiky and then it has more pointy edges overall it still has that triangle end but if you look closely it, it can get even more spiky and then you have the hair strand lines to just really sell that it's hair you can have a video by hair <laughs> using my hero characters and I have this guy in it you see the basic shape of the hair you see the lines pointing to that one spot and you just keep going and then you're gonna add more hair strand lines to really sell that it's hair and in some cases if you want to shade certain parts you're just gonna be darkening the lines that you're using adding more lines some of the lines will kind of overlap to really sell it hair strands landing over other hair strands tip five would be you adding more hair strand lines in certain areas specifically edges of the hair as it's like going away you know floating whatever towards the edge of it or the roots or if it's tied together with an accessory like a bow or a ribbon where that ribbon hits or touches the hair you want hair strands where there's any touch to the hair you want lines to suggest hair strands how subtle how you want to apply them depends on your style whatever style you pick be consistent so we have Kirishima's hair kind of combed and you can see in that direction that it's being combed that's where the hair strand lines are going to be pointed towards and because of the nature of his hair and how spiky it is you're going to still see spiky parts even though it's combed but all the spiky parts are going to be flattened and pointing towards the same direction to sell the idea that it's been combed and that just tells us it's been touched or it's been gelled up or something but in some cases it's different as you can see here if we if he was wearing a baseball cap type thing you can see the hair popping out from the front and the rest of it's kind of smoothed out because the cap is pushing it down so that is also a point of touch or certain parts of the hair is tied and then you're going to see that the hair strand lines are going to concentrate towards those areas of touch to really sell that it's been tied it's touched in some way in one case because of the cap and the other because of the bow the ribbon and all of that so the hair strand lines are really in that corner and then sometimes 
at the roots of the head or the scalp where the hair is kind of going to be pointing out. If your style doesn't directly draw a straight line for the hairline, you can have like little dashes of hair strand lines to show that that's where the hair is coming from as you can see with the top Kirishima. There's been a sausage fest so far, let's switch that up. Tip six is that the shape changes with touch, wind, gravity, a breeze blowing. You want to change the shape of the hair and then whatever that hair shape changes to, the hair strands follow. So you want to keep that in mind. Same with the shading, all of that. And then you're having the strokes of your pen or like the lines to suggest hair strands in the direction of the flow of the hair. Thicker, harder hair are obviously harder to move versus hair that is much thinner. And hair that is much thinner is more likely to have more hair strand lines versus thicker hair. And by that, I just mean her hair that's just stronger and firmer and just less likely to be pushed around. Those would have less hair strand lines, even though they still will have it. But again, all this kind of stuff depends on your style. So this comes with a lot of practice and you getting used to the way you want to draw. So, you know, drawing the lines, again, going with the flow of what we have there already. And as you can see at that point, at the uh, like close to her forehead, that top is a lot of concentration where the hair is gonna coming from, and so we has a, have a lot of hair strand lines in that area. And you know what? Maybe your style doesn't even have any hair strand lines. And you can see a lot of that in, say, more simplified cartoons where, you know, the animation doesn't want to deal with drawing those lines over and over and over, and they want to be able to produce the content quickly, quickly. So they make life easy for themselves with less lines. Here you can also see the, the hair strand lines can also serve as a form of shading, right? Behind Ochako there, like behind her head, you can see that there's a lot of hair strand lines to just sell the idea of shading rather than, you know, hatching or cross hatching over there, which would look very unnatural. So even though her hair is not necessarily black, we just do a lot of shading or hair strand lines at that point to just sell shading. Same applies with uh, maybe hairstyles that have been hit with a curling iron, whatever it be. And you can see a little curl here, right? We just get the shape, figure out the shape, and then we're just having lines sell and convey the movement or the structure of the hair in that motion. So the hair, you know, this looks weird, but I can see this in an anime any day. And you can see how it's structured. We just get that basic shape. And then we use the hair strand lines to sell what's going on. Tip seven, the strand lines can be harder to see if the hair is full black, right? You would just end up drawing more lines, more strokes of the pen to kind of fill it in. Again, in the direction of the hair and the hair flow, according to gravity, wind, whatever. But note that there are some styles, especially if the hair is completely black, that you just want to fill it in black and then have little white lines, right? Almost like negative, white strand lines to suggest highlights in the hair. There are many ways to do this. I've seen several creators handle this very differently. I've seen several series handle it very differently. It comes down to your art style. And since we're doing something really sketchy with this tutorial, it's kind of hard to show. So if you guys are interested in a separate video that goes into coloring hair and fill in all those spots in, whether it be, you know, different colors of hair or this flat black and different ways we can handle that for manga or anime or whatever, how to tone hair or how to show the highlights in the hair, please leave a like on this video. And don't forget to hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. And obviously, please, United States is... Obviously, please, United States is smash that subscribe button. And I'll make a video that focuses on that and showing you different ways of putting highlights in black hair. And, you know, maybe even reference other series and diff reference other popular series and how they handle it. I'll do one for color with anime and then maybe do one for manga with that black and white tone style. For the last tips, I'm going to be making up fake or non-existent My Hero Academia characters, maybe putting them in UA. And you guys can actually have fun in the comments and name this character. Maybe give him a quirk. What quirk do you think this character has? If you wrote My Hero and this character was in, I don't know, one of the classes, what quirk would they have? 
what are, what is their name? You fill in the blanks. Give them a superhero name. Why not? Tip eight. Based off of all the other tips that we've gone through up until this point, you know, the shapes and the strand lines and all of that, with with very messy hair, the shape is different, especially if the hair is not like black. If it's any other color, any lighter color, warmer color, whatever, the shape is messy, but the strand lines are still organized in the sense that they are still following the shape of the mess, if that makes any sense. And then depending on your style, if the hair is like completely flat black, then you can just have fun and just be messy, you know, with that black and white manga style. Leading into tip nine is, you know, messy hair is really just complex hair. And complex hair, you have like things like dreadlocks and you know, all these Goldilocks hairs tied in a knot. Once you figure out the complex shape, the strand lines just come in after. The strand lines, all they're doing is just making, the, making it look more like hair, making it feel more organic. And again, it depends on your style, how you want to apply that. Again, same deal as before, had like messy shapes. So this is kind of like a mess. It's a stylistic mess, but a mess nonetheless. And then we just have the hair strand lines sell the movement of that hair. You can really get away with a lot of stuff. So when it comes to dreadlocks, it's really like a bunch of headless snakes. It depends on how long you want the dreadlocks to be. Here, we're gonna have it a little short, but once we're done with how many, however many we want them to be or things like that, then we have like, little lines, slightly curved, just going from one end to the other. And those are the hair strand lines in this case. Kind of complex, but it sells the idea that these are dreadlocks. And then on the side, like the side of his hair, I'm kind of giving it like a little gradient, kind of like a fade where the barber kind of has a gradient with the hair. So we're just doing little dashes and we have thicker dashes to just just little dashes at the top and then you know sticker at the bottom and as we fall down i'm doing less of it and less of it and less of it to sell a gradient which is what would happen if you go to the barber you know give it them stylistic cuts on the side and we have that fade and then for where hair is tied up in some kind of weird knot once you figure out the knot then you're just drawing lines accordingly drawing the hair strand lines accordingly Similar to what we did with Froppy earlier, even though that was completely black, but you can see how we were moving the lines according to how the hair was flowing. Tip 10 is you wanna have all these tips at the back of your mind all working at the same time while you're drawing hair. You also need to practice a lot, use reference, whether it be from real life or your favorite illustrators to see how they kind of simplify real life. But Real life illustrations, using them as reference is always strong because it gives you a stronger foundation knowing the rules before you can actually go out and break them in your style, whatever that is. And that's all I got for you guys regarding the tips. You know, obviously there are other things that kind of break the rules and that's why I come in and say, again, it depends on your style, especially when you look at characters like, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, homeboy's hair looks like a straight up blade. And then the other short dude in My Hero, his hair is basically gummy bears that are really sticky. His name leaves me right now. Y'all can leave in the comments what his name actually is. I can't remember. I've actually cooled off on My Hero and let like the latest two seasons, I haven't seen them at all. So I'm gonna go see season three and four and just watch them fully without having to like wait long periods of time. So forgive me if I've forgotten a couple names. But in a future video, we'll dive even further with hairstyles as well, where I do a new 20 ways drawing hairstyles and then we can really explore some complex hairstyles with the same tips being used here to really drive it home. So if you guys wanna see all that stuff and more, again, please like the video. United States just smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I pull absolutely anything. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Check out my own comic. You can read the first chapter free, Apple Black, published and serialized on Saturday AM. You can also get the first two volumes of my book, Sad Day Am App, where you can read more of Apple Black as well as all the other series on our roster. We are the world's most diverse manga anthology. Think Shonen Jump, but here in the West. Please download the app. It's free. The latest three issues of Sad Day Am are always free, and Apple Black Volume 3 content returns inside Sad Day Am this summer. If you have any questions about this tutorial, Saturday AM, Apple Black, my comic, my other comic, Bakasi, anything you could possibly need will be in the description below, or you can ask questions in the comments and I'll answer as best I can. 
you also get two free months of Skillshare. You're welcome. So I manga, and I'm out.